Well, um, we we just gone gone past uh, one o'clock, which uh, is the time we we'd like to get together just to uh, take a few moments to pray, pray into the nation, pray into what's going on. So if you've just joined, um, you you're right on time. Um, we just uh, took took a few moments just to to get ourselves going this morning. And uh, so here we are on Tuesday during lockdown and here in Joyburg, a bit of a cold, blustery, overcast day. Um, the, the, the wind is really rattling at the, the window panes here. Um, but it's a, it's a warm day in terms of what God is doing in our hearts. And so, um, yeah, welcome, welcome to it. I've been taking a a little bit of time in the book of Malachi and uh, just looking to see what the Lord is, is speaking to us in, uh, in this time and in the season and uh, there, there's a, a number of things and I'll, I'll come back to, to Malachi I think in, in subsequent messages but he, he's speaking to the people, he's speaking to the priests, they've been doing some shenanigans They've been been using the the priesthood just to to mess with the finances and so on. Um, you know, if you think that it's only a, a relatively new and modern thing that um, people can use the Lord to to uh, to misuse finances, unfortunately, it's been something that has been an age old um, challenge. And uh, so the Lord speaks really very clearly. Um, and, and brings a, a judgment against those who are, are using the priesthood uh, to, to feather their own nests. And so the first couple of chapters in, in the book of Malachi are dealing with that. And then he switches his attention in, in chapter 3 and, uh, and basically um, says to them, Behold, I will send my messenger... And he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. And uh, so what had been going on is that people had been, been doing their own thing. They had uh, been abusing the, the Lord's patience, so to speak, and they say, well, where is this Lord, and where is He coming, and what's happening? And so the Lord prophesies, He said, guys, when He comes, He's going to come suddenly, and, um, and when He comes, things are going to shift and change. And so this was a prophetic word 400 years before the coming of Jesus, that He would send somebody, a messenger, to prepare the way. We know, obviously, that was John the Baptist. And then he will come suddenly to his temple. In other words, they weren't expecting it. And, uh, and so when Jesus came, he came in a way that was other than what people were anticipating. Um, they were looking for an earthly king, an earthly messiah, someone who would overthrow the, the foreign um, occupation, the, the, uh, the armies of, of Rome that were occupying Jerusalem. That, that he would do, do things in the natural, but Jesus came and he did things far more profound. He, he changed things in the realm of the Spirit. Um, and then he speaks about fire that was coming to, um, to the people. In verse 2 of Malachi chapter 3, it says, But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. We'll get on to the refining fire in a moment. The fuller's soap. So this was a, a, a job that was given to somebody, a fuller, who would, would cleanse the dirty wool that had come from the sheep and would clean out through various um, soap and, and ingredients uh, a very harsh kind of a soap that would strip away the dirt and the imperfections uh, in the wool. And, uh, and they would also be, be treading on the wool as a, as a method of getting all of the, um, the dirt and the grime and the oil and the grease out of the, 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 the wool. And, um, and we see that uh, later on in Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, after the transfiguration, it says that Jesus' garments were, were white, 
shining, brilliant white, uh, whiter than any fuller who would ever have been able to bleach or to, to, to clean the, the, the wool of, of the garment. In other words, so we can see that the, this fuller soap was, was a specific application. It was for a deep cleansing that would take place. And so here the prophet Malachi is busy saying that when God comes, he comes to refine and he comes to purify and he comes to cleanse. You know, we, we, we have just celebrated Passover. We've celebrated the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. And so uh, we, we know that uh, our sins were once as scarlet, but now they will be white as snow. They will be um, cleansed. And, and so this, this cleansing of our sin and our imperfection is, is what Jesus is, is busy doing. And so in this lockdown, Jesus is bringing about a purification. He's bringing about a cleansing. It goes on in verse 3, uh, picking up on this aspect of the refiner's fire. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Jer Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And so the whole context, as we were saying earlier, is this thing of People were, 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 were juking God. They, they weren't bringing Him proper offerings. They weren't worshipping Him in the way that they should have. And they were doing it uh, through, through cheating on the offering. Another message for another day. But the point is that there were, there were uh, forms, if you like, of, of righteousness. But they, they, there wasn't the purity of heart that was accompanying their, their offerings. And so, uh, during this time of lockdown, the Lord is speaking to our hearts. You know, there's this, this, uh, this, this uh, big thing that's going on, not just on the planet, but we're seeing that the Lord is busy working and He's shaping the inside of our hearts. He's, he's causing a refining to take place. What, what, what's the point of what I'm trying to say? Is use... The opportunity of this shutdown to shut yourself in with the Lord and allow for him to refine you. So there have been all sorts of things that have been going on. There's been fear mongering. There's, there's, there's been um, all kinds of conspiracy theories that have been put forward. There's all sorts of um, uh, lack of, of, uh, of, of faith and of hope and of seeing God's redemptive purpose in all of this. I'm wanting to bring us back to the point of saying, Lord, you're bigger than this trial. You're bigger than anything that's going on on the planet right now. And we want to allow you to refine our hearts that you would come, even as you came suddenly to the temple, would you come suddenly into our hearts and would you bring about a refining and a cleansing that we might be able to be those who bring our lives as an acceptable offering. That we would be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. So the whole thing about refining is that there would be the fire that would come and the raw material would be, would be heated up and would, be, would become molten. And so that the imperfections and the dross would, would, would come to the surface that they might skim off all of the rubbish and all of the impurities and the junk and skim it off the top so that the, uh, the, uh, the, the purifying process would cause something that was of value to, to, be, uh, to, to remain. And, and so Jesus is wanting to come as the refiner's fire in this time and it's, a, it's, I mean, it's like being in a crucible. 
we, we're not able to do the things that we want to do. There's a restriction. There's, a, there's, there's just so much challenge. It's like we're, on, we're, we're in this fire, so to speak. But the Lord is using it to allow things that are in our hearts that have been lurking way beneath the surface that we might see these things. It might be exposed, not to humiliate us, but that it might be dealt with, might be skimmed off and removed so that the, the treasure, the valuable aspect of our lives might remain. So as we are in this, this crisis, this fire, so to speak, let's allow the Holy Spirit to refine us. So that's the one bit of fire that I wanted to speak to us today. The other one is in Malachi chapter 4. So just a little bit further on, the next chapter. And, uh, and God is, is prophesying through, through the prophet. He says, For behold, the day is coming. It's burning like an oven when all the arrogant and all evildoers will become like stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze says the Lord of hosts, so that will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out leaping like calves from the stall. So there's a fire coming, there's a different kind of a fire that's coming. This is now a fire that 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 exposes the, the wicked and those who are doing evil and and we're seeing actually in this time that um, many people who've been involved in all kinds of of corruption and wickedness are being exposed and uh, and and in a sense the, this kind of fire that's coming to them is, is causing a cleansing and so we're seeing our crime rates come down. We're seeing our murder rates come down. We're seeing corruption levels um, being exposed and being dealt with. We're, we're, we're seeing a purifying, if you like, of, of what's going on in the planet. And the earth is, uh, is, 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 is a much healthier place. So pollution is down. Smog and smoke is down. Rivers are... are um, regenerating again and so we we seeing uh, the benefit of health and healing in terms of what's happening on the planet but here's the promise uh, when this day comes and I, I'm not suggesting that this is the ultimate day of the Lord please that's not what I'm saying but as we're looking as we're seeing this fiery trial and this this difficulty that's coming we, we're seeing that 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 uh, the, the, the wickedness is, is being consumed. It's being burnt up in an oven, so to speak. But here's the promise. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, the son as in the, the ball of fire that rises in the morning. Okay. It's not talking about the son as in the S-O-N, the son of God, son of righteousness. But there's an implication of, of these two things. But the spelling in the Hebrew is, is very clear. It's our sun that rises in the morning. But there's coming a righteousness. And he will shine like the noonday sun. So there's this interplay between the sun of God and the sun that shines in the sky. But it will rise with healing in its wings. What's the takeout for us today? Every day when the sun comes up, it's a new day. It's a new day for us to receive righteousness. His mercies are new and fresh every day. But it's a new day for us to receive healing. And so as the sun of righteousness, as in the S-O-N, the Son of God, the righteous one who was displayed to be the ultimate righteous one when he defeated the grave and he rose from the dead that when he rises there's healing that comes to us in in the rays of his love that 
come to us, in the, the, the light of the gospel that comes to us. There is a, a healing that comes to our souls, but there's also a healing that comes to our bodies. Folks, I want us to reach out to the Lord for healing. Healing of our souls, the deep wounds, the sense of disappointment, the sense of dejection, the, 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 the trials and the hardships that are coming our way. That He's wanting to bring peace. He's wanting to dispel darkness and the doom and the gloom. He's wanting to dispel that. He's wanting to shine rays of bright sunshine. His light penetrating our hearts. Not just our emotions, but also our thoughts, the dark thinking. If you're being under a cloud of, of heaviness and depression, those wispy vapor clouds are going to be burnt off by the coming of the full strength of the noonday sun. And so we're trusting the Lord that He comes with healing of our minds, healing of our hearts, and healing of our bodies. Folks, this is a time to allow the Holy Spirit to bring deep healing. Those parts of our lives that we're hidden. It's a bit like that refiner's fire. Okay? The, the, the dross and, and the imperfections were mixed in with the base elements. And it's only with the heat that these things were separated out, were able to come to the surface and could be skimmed off. Let's not waste this shutdown in terms of what's going on in our hearts and our minds. Things are being exposed. We're thinking thoughts we haven't thought for a long time. We're feeling emotions we probably haven't felt for a long time. This is not the enemy at work. This is the Holy Spirit at work. That He might bring a purifying process into our life. A cleansing. That He might bring that f the action of the fuller's soap. That would get out the deep stains. The things that we've been walking with for many, many years, the, the, the things that we've been carrying, hurts and grievances and, 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 and um, uh, just devastations of the past and, and regrets and, and, and these things that have been plaguing our minds for so many years. This is the perfect time of being in the, in the incubator, so to speak, of being in the cocoon. That we might experience a transformation. That He rises with healing in His wings. That He, in a sense, there's a covering, there's a shelter over us, a protection. That the wounds of our hearts, you know, I'm just sensing there's, there's some of you that when you were um, three, four, five years of age. And, and deep disappointments set into your heart. Your, your, your parents neglected something. They forgot something. They, they didn't come through for you in a way that you'd hoped. And a deep disappointment came into your heart. And a woundedness. Uh, an innocence was lost. And you know, your heavenly father is a good father. And he wants to reach into that little child. Remove the sting and the poison of that event. And he wants to release a wholeness to you. Just allow the Holy Spirit right now. I can just sense he's doing that right now. He's causing a healing to come into your heart. That the pain of that memory, the memory is there, but the pain is being removed. There's a surgery that's taking place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The poison, the toxin of that event is being removed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're releasing the healing of Jesus. Just receive that right now in that memory. So, Jesus, where were you when that took place? And with the eyes of your heart, 
see that he was there, that he was being grieved by the disappointment, by the trauma, by the hurt. That wasn't his will for you. His will was always protection. His will was always that you would be whole. He just comes now to release healing. Even as the Holy Spirit is lifting the trauma out of your memory. He's taking, in a sense, the knife out of your heart. You felt like you were stabbed in the back, some of you. He's removing that knife. And there's an ointment, there's a healing that's coming into you. Just let it wash, flood over your heart, your memory. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now just begin to thank Him for His nearness. Thank Him that He can turn all things around. That those things that the enemy meant for harm, for evil, just as Joseph experienced the betrayal at the hands of of those closest to him, sold, thrown into the pit firstly, falsely stated that he'd been killed when he wasn't, sold off into slavery, just in a foreign land, in thrown into prison, all of these different traumas and tragedies. And yet he was able to see that he was going to be used by God as the instrument to bring healing, salvation to an entire nation during a time of famine. And he said to his brothers when he was restored, you might have meant this for evil or for harm, but God has turned around it and he's meant it to become good. You know, as you get healed, you become whole from your own trauma and your own pain your own disappointment as you work through that thing of rejection and you come to realize that you have a heavenly father who fully accepts you that you're able to then share this testimony of healing and wholeness to others that they might too have a sense of hope that there is a pathway to freedom for them Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. So, hey, as we've been praying into this thing of healing and refining, many people praying for healing physically from COVID-19. But there's, an, there's a huge need for us to just experience the deep inner healing of the heart and the mind. That our Heavenly Father, through what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross, wants to release to each one of us. So may you take time over these next hours and, and days to allow full and complete healing and wholeness to come to you in this time of cocooning. May you be blessed, may you be encouraged, and may you be healed. In Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Been good being with you. Folks, if you have any specific prayer need, please pop onto the website, fill out a form. There's a team. Be ready and uh, love to pray with you. They'll phone and make contact with you at an uh, appropriate time and uh, connect with you then. And also, folks, if you are a part of the wider family and you want to be connected into a community connect group, also, take time just to fill out one of the, the forms there and um, we'll, we'll be slotting you in with a, a group who will be able to give you uh, ongoing support and care and phone you and there will be Zoom calls on Wednesday evening as part of our Connect Group's um, uh, uh, media uh, meetings. Obviously, during this lockdown, we can't be in each other's homes physically, but we can be in each other's homes uh, through the social media platform. So bless you with that. Uh, just a, a wonderful 
a uh, lot of testimonies and feedback that are coming, people connecting with one another, um, just caring for each other in, uh, in phone calls and messages and uh, words of encouragement. And uh, perhaps there's somebody that is, is on your heart, your mind, you know, as you've just been thinking and reflecting uh, through today's session. There's maybe somebody from years and years ago, maybe from school, and uh, it's no coincidence that they're coming to mind. And take some time just to uh, track, track them down uh, through Facebook or whatever it is. Reach out to them and, and, uh, and, and just love on somebody. You don't have to bring up anything. If it was negative from the past, you don't have to bring that up. It's time to reach out in love and kindness and mercy and forgiveness. Just the way God reached out to us in His love and kindness, forgiveness and mercy. Freely we have received. Freely we give to others. So bless you guys. Been great being with you and uh, look forward to connecting again soon. So have have an awesome day. And uh, all I need to do is say cheerio.